Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the first of two sessions for the National Leadership Development Series for Tau Beta Sigma. Uh, and for those who are interested in running for one of our Tau Beta Sigma National Leadership Team positions. And so the first thing that we wanted, the first item that we wanted to discuss is the agenda for the evening. And so um, each group will actually have introductions um, in as to who is speaking to you and bringing this information. And then followed by the introduction of the speaker, they will also then give you a little bit of the tidbits that occur on their component of the leadership team. And so without further ado, I will pass it over to our chairperson and vice chairperson for the Tau Sigma Alumni Association Executive Council. Good evening, everyone. Um, I bring you greetings from the Tau Beta Sigma Alumni Association Executive Council. I am Dr. Thea Murphy, the current vice chair person of the Executive Council, as well as the current LAA director. Hello, everybody. My name is David Alexander, and I'm the chairperson of the Tau Beta Sigma Alumni Association. And excited to spend a little bit of time here talking today about the opportunities to, to continue your involvement at a deeper level um, and, and the potential of running for the Executive Council. So when we think about um, the Executive Council, we are made up of a six-person board, and, and we do stagger term limits on that. So there's always going to be three people who are going to be remaining on, and then three people who will have spots up for election. And, and one of the big reasons why we, we do this in this biennial process is, is to make sure that we always have that continuity of knowledge to allow us to continue to expand and grow um, and and be the best version of ourselves to support our, our alumni members. When you think about the alumni, it's the one population of our organization that's always going to grow um, because as people transition from active, we're always going to hit in that alumni space. And so it allows us to continue that evolution of our thought process. And so we have those six people that really are focused on how do we continue to evolve ourselves as an alumni association, be that resource and vehicle that our alumni need to continue that connection that we started in undergraduate, but have continued on through, throughout our, our Tau Beta Sigma life. So one of the things I wanted to talk about is if you're interested in serving on the executive council, the way that we work our elections is that you are elected to serve as a member of the executive council. And then from within there, we elect the different board positions from within that time, within that scope. If you're elected to the executive council, some of the things that, that we look at for you is, is kind of what your responsibilities are. And so starting that out, um, you do serve as the national leadership of the Alumni Association and looking at the alumni as a whole. And so anything that involves our, our local alumni associations or alumni matters in general, this is your primary point of contact where, where we can really look at how do we generate this alumni experience how do we continue to advance our alumni interest? And how do we continue to, to support the growth of the TBSA as a whole? Some of the things that, that also are important to think about when you're running for the executive council or to really think about what are the time commitments that you would have to make to really be effective within there. So each member really serves a position where we support the different efforts of the TBSA, whether that's our, our finance director, communications director, LAA director, in, in various different different areas. Outside of that, we also do have monthly video conference meetings um, in which you're gonna be expected to continue your work throughout the month to ensure the advancement of the, of the position you support um, and, and really make sure that, that you are, are bringing your best interests and, and your best work forward to support that position. There is travel involved, which is always an exciting piece. And so we do travel to our winter council meetings, summer council meetings, as well as district conventions throughout the year. And, and so when you think about that, this is your space to really represent the alumni interest of the organization. Um, this, is, this is your space to, to really think about what is that alumni experience that we create so the people always feel they have a place to come home and come back to. Um, when you think about that, we also support our national convention, and, and so there will always be an alumni track that goes alongside the active member track. 
Um, and, and so we are responsible for planning what that alumni experience is going to look like at National Convention, making sure that you have programming that's relevant to you, while also making sure that those hallmark programs of the sorority, like the Women in Music Speaker Series, are offered to you as well. Um, the other thing is you do collaborate with other branches of the national leadership. So you will be expected to, to work with the members of the National Council, the Board of Trustees, the Kappa Kappa Psi Alumni Association Board of Directors, because we also have these unified goals to support the overall um, organizations of Kappa Kappa Psi and Tau Beta Sigma. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Thea to tell us a little bit about some of those skills that will really benefit you in the role. Okay, and so in being a successful on the executive council, there's um, professionalism type related skills and task oriented skills. And so um, as Dave shared, you really have to be able to collaborate and communicate with others through the monthly meetings, the monthly reports, and when you work with alumni and out at conventions and things. So you really have to have very clear written and verbal communication skills. Um, we often manage a lot of projects along with our job in real life and our life schedule. And so you really have to be able to manage your time and be very organized to keep up with your various tasks and things you're responsible for. Um, we are always trying to grow, change, and innovate. So you have to be open to learning. And because we do a lot of forward thinking, you have to be prepared to be a big picture thinker. Um, we are um, the leadership for the alumni. And so we want to make sure that we're always putting our best foot forward. And so you have to have that attention to detail and you have to be prepared to adapt as the needs of our uh, the alumni we serve, as the need of the organization ebbs and flows, you have to be able to adapt. And then of course, open and responsive to feedback, feedback from your colleagues on the EC, feedback from other arms of sorority leadership, but also feedback from the members that we serve. And then you have to be um, a supportive leadership person. So you are going to be working with different people who have different perspectives, who have different understandings, and who have different needs. And you have to be prepared to provide that supportive leadership as we work with um, the alumni. Um, and then being task-oriented, right, our goal is First and foremost, as Dave said, a place for our alumni to come and be um, a part and be home. And so we have to be prepared to do things in the space of alumni development. And um, as I said before, we do a lot of forward thinking. So you have to be able to have long-term visioning. And then when we talk about being financially stable, we did talk about, you know, there's some travel involved. And of course, um, you get reimbursed for that travel, but you do have some upfront costs. And plus, as it relates to the organization, financial stability, right? We want to make sure that we are good caretakers of the money that our alumni members have entrusted us with and that we are doing our best to use the money as designated um, and that we are not overspending and under budgeting. And then, of course, we do a lot with technology and social media in this day and age. So we do um, have to be a little technology and social media savvy. All right. So what I want to talk about now is a little bit about what the chairperson and the vice chairperson do. So as I mentioned earlier, you get elected to the executive council, but then within that population, once those six members are elected to the group, we do have an internal election to support the chairperson and elect the vice chairperson. Once that's done, the chairperson then is responsible for designating the other director positions, just based on where people's skill sets are at, where their interests are, and really how do we leverage people's strengths to continue to drive the organization forward. Some of the things that, that you see here is, is really, um, a high level overview of what we do. So it's you're, it's about providing that oversight and implementation of the overall vision for the TBSAA. Whether that's the programs that we do, our membership um, retention and, and growth strategies, and really making sure that there is accountability behind our actions to continue to move things forward. Um, it's also about making sure that we have harmonious working relationships as, as an executive council so that we bring out the best in each other, that we bring out the, the best collaborative spirit within each other. And it's not just about somebody's individual goals, but how do we raise everybody up around us to be their best as well? 
The other thing we do is, as the chairperson is you do collaborate with the a Alumni Association for Kappa Kappa Psi's chair and, and really look at how do we elevate the alumni experience across both organizations um, and, and making sure that, that, that we are moving in concert together um, to, to provide the best support that we can. Um, there is also support to our local alumni associations and district leaderships in, in conjunction with the LAA director on how to, how to execute on a great convention experience. And then overall also working with the different levels of the different uh, heads of the other, other branches of the national leadership. So with the national president, the board chairs and whatnot to make sure that the three groups as a whole are working together on that unified vision. The vice chairperson really is, is my, my right-hand person. So I lucked out this year with Dr. Thea Murphy serving as my vice chair. Um, and she makes me look better. And, and that's the most that you could ever ask out of your vice chair. She is, is right beside me in my decision-making and my th planning processes. And this is a person that if I'm not able to be there and, and move for things forward, she's able to step into my absence and to continue to seamlessly run the organization without fail. Um, she's very much involved in, in the planning and strategy sessions that we keep um, and, and really helps shape the future vision of not only today's alumni association, but what does that future vision look like as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Thea to talk through some of our director positions. Thank you, Dave. Um, I love working beside you and supporting our organization. And so first we have um, communication director and this person really is our um, direct communication arm of the EC and the TBSAA, right? They develop and monitor all of our communication tools. They maintain our website and our marketing calendar. And also they serve as the official record keeper of the EC, taking our notes, our minutes, sharing our minutes with the other arms of national leadership um, and making sure that um, a record is kept of all of our official meetings. And our finance director is responsible for our budgeting and making sure that we are fiscal, um, fiscally responsible with the funds that are entrusted to us. And so they maintain those financial records and making sure we do so in accordance to the um, headquarters expectations. They monitor our budget on a monthly basis for our actuals and projected. Um, they're really responsible for helping us in addition to our dues, raise additional funds through fundraising and sales and such, which many of you have participated in. And finally, we have a new program, an exciting new program, the LAA grant, which they are going to be responsible for also managing um, along with a couple of our other directors. And it's very important to note that all of our director positions really have to collaborate with each other to get the work done. Um, our final three positions, the LAA director, which I currently hold this position. Um, so the vice chair does hold two positions. Um, the um, really working with our local alumni associations of which we have chapter-based, regional, and district associations, and they're all fit under the umbrella of LAAs. And so the goal of the LAA director is really to just promote the formation of new LAAs and then to support LAAs in the continued um, operations. And so managing that renewal process um, for um, LAAs, collaborating with my counterpart in KKSIAA to make sure that we are supporting our joint LAAs, um, and then providing development activities and informational sessions for our LAA leaders and coordinating all LAA initiatives. The membership director promotes an, um, new membership, right, and continued membership. They are really our arm to continue to grow our organization, not only to grow, but to make sure that we are retaining our members. And they also manage our Gold Star Club programming, um, which we thank all of you who are members of the Gold Star Club. And then they serve as our primary contact for national headquarters on all membership issues. And then, of course, they support um, the LAA director when it's time for renewal as we have to vet all of the LAA members to ensure that they are TBSA members. And then finally, the programs director, many of you might um, see the work most often of the program director because this is where we really work to serve our alumni and they coordinate programs like the grant, the scholarship, and our professional development program. They also um, work 
worked with the committee to um, review our application processes for these things. They explore new ideas to make sure that we're continuing to provide programming that meets the needs of our alumni. And then they serve as the chair for the 5K, um, Greater Bands 5K, which is um, one of our philanthropic endeavors of the TBSA, where we continue to give back to the band world. And now I'm going to turn it over to Chris from the Board of Trustees to help us understand a little bit more about the board. Thank you, Thea. That was a wonderful overview for the AA. My name's Chris Wright. I'm the Vice Chair for the Board of Trustees, and I'm going to briefly go through a little bit about what the board entails and what being on the board entails. Um, I am the vice chair. Our chair, Dawn Farmer, could not be with us tonight, and she sends her regrets about that, but that is the role of the vice chair. If the chair is not able to attend, the vice chair steps in to do the, to do the things. Um, so a little bit about the board of trustees. Um, the structure that Dave and Thea laid out for you, six members on the board who are elected, um, three members come on each biennium, three will go off each biennium. That is consistent with the board structure also. We are also um, lucky to have the immediate past president and the current national president sit on the board with us. Um, so all together, uh, we round out to eight, um, eight people, six voting members. Um, to be on the board at all, you need to be a life member in good standing. Um, you need to be at least 30 years old when you apply. And you should have um, some business skill and acumen that is professional and demonstrated in your career life, in your um, the, the jobs that you've worked or the profession that you have taken on. Um, thank you, Allison. Um, a couple of responsibilities, the chair, uh, is responsible for all of our agendas and really sets the tone and the goals for the biennium for the board. Um, the board's job in general is to oversee the financial health of the sorority, to maintain our trust accounts and to make sure that our investments are well-timed and well-placed to the best of our ability so that the sorority can continue into the future with that um, really sound bedrock financial stability that we need to do all of our programs and to continue to plan for those programs in the future. Um, we coordinate um, involving past national presidents and past leadership members, um, carrying them forward with us into the future, even though they are no longer serving in active leadership positions. Um, the chair works very closely with the national president and the TBSAA chair to ensure the cohesiveness of the three groups as they move the sorority forward. And uh, she has on, Dawn wrote some of these for the chairperson, so I'm sort of paraphrasing what she put, uh, to recognize major events within the lives of the leadership team. That's one of the positions that the board has taken on. Um, it's important to recognize that while we are serving on national leadership, we are all also experiencing real life. <laughs> and that real life comes with challenges and rewards, and we want to honor that for our leadership members. The vice chair, the position I currently hold, uh, steps in for the chair when needed. Um, they uh, contribute to discussions and projects for other board members. So they're sort of a, a volunteer for anyone who needs extra hands. The vice chair will also hold um, a chair position themselves. So much like Dave was describing for the TBSAA, when you are elected to the board, um, within that group of people, you are also, you're not elected to the positions besides chair and vice chair, but you you volunteer for your interests with um, the different committees that we have within the board. Um, so some of them we'll get to on the next slide, but um, the vice chair at the moment, my current position is the scholarship chair. So we oversee the scholarships of the sorority and continuously work with the VPCR to improve the processes of the application and the marketing um, so students know that they exist and that they should apply for them. 
and we try to make really good decisions with the finances to make sure that that money can either increase over time or the number of scholarships can increase over time or both. That's our goal. Could you, Allison? So some of the related skills for being a board member, um, time management is essential. And you'll find that thread runs throughout all three groups in the leadership. Um, while you're having a life and doing TBS, you have to be able to balance those. Communication with the other leadership team members, the national headquarters staff, and with each other, very important. Um, being able to be a team player so that you can step in. Um, on the board now, each of us has sort of our area of expertise that we were drawn to. That's why we volunteered. But it's also important to be able to lend that extra helping hand to other areas um, that other people are working on. If you can be a supportive member of the board, the whole group moves forward much better and works together much better. And you also need to have a little bit of skill with the long-term planning. Keeping your eyes on the finances at the moment and how to increase those and to move the projects forward, but also where would you like to see those in 5, 10, 20 years for the people who take the position over once you're finished? Please, Allison. Um, as I mentioned, the board, each person chairs a different committee within the board structure. So currently we have the capital development chair, the scholarships committee, finances, the legacy committee, and the Sunshine Committee. Um, Legacy is the person at the moment who is coordinating past national presidents, past leadership, how we incorpor incorporate them into events and conventions and how to keep them involved over time. The Sunshine Committee is an interesting one. It's how we recognize leadership members for milestones in their lives, um, marriages, births, adoptions, um, having people pass on in their lives. It's sort of the, uh, the friendly human connection. Um, we make sure that those events are marked because we do value everyone who's on the leadership team and we want them to know that their contributions matter and it, it matters very much that they are here with us doing the work. Um, as I mentioned before, the chairperson and the vice chairperson are elected by the board members from within that elected group. Also the secretary position. Um, usually somebody volunteers for it, but it does need to be um, voted on who's going to do that job. You are constantly learning as a BOT member. Um, there is always a new facet of the sorority that comes to the forefront, uh, whether that be how national headquarters structure operates or how processes and procedures work, um, how the sorority itself has come to operate the way that it does and what decisions have been made to lead us to the positions where we're at today. Um, and how each group in the sorority the, between the National Council and the alumni and the Board of Trustees really um, how they operate with each other to affect day-to-day -day function. Would you forward that, Allison, please? Oh, and that's it. So <laughs> I hope that was a good overview. And if you have questions at the end, I would be happy to, to address those. And I am now going to pass it over to Allison Lehman to talk about the National Council. Thanks so much, Chris. Um, I am Allison Lehman. I'm our National Vice President for Communication and Recognition, and I'm excited to kind of kick off the National Council um, portion of this. There's some similarities across the board for the four of us. We all work very closely together as a team, the four elected positions plus our Vice President for Professional Relations. So each of these four positions is um, elected during our biennial, biennial National Convention. The VPCR position, it's much easier to abbreviate as VPCR, is a role that holds many hats, wears many hats. You have to hold and wear, actually. Um, so we are the secretary for the organization. We also facilitate all of the communications aspects, so from social media to other media, video, audio, um, coordinating things like this presentation, um, working on our Zoom. You kind of dabble in all different 
different areas. Um, and in addition to that, you do have some official roles that involve having your signature on the shingles, on charters, on different items along with the president or and or the national um, executive director. So a bit more about the specific functions. Um, as the role implies, there's a lot of focus on communication as well as recognition. And then as we know in Tau Beta Sigma, there's always a little bit extra that gets added into each of your roles. So from a communication standpoint, the VPCR, as I mentioned, is um, the one who's coordinating our social media and our online presence also coordinating any email communications that come from the National Council that may be facilitating the organization on the email distribution list or it may be drafting emails that then get reviewed for finalization within the Council or from the National President. There's also tasks involving the National website, so making sure that we have the up-to-date lists of our National Leadership Team members, making sure that events and other content is accurate and relevant for our student members and alumni members. We also have in the secretary function, uh, the VPCR is the person who is taking minutes and distributing them at all of the National Council's functions, as well as our regular meetings with the district counselors and the chapter visitation assistants. And then something that's been new for this biennium is our National Communications Committee. So it still is a work in progress and really getting onto its own two feet, but advising that group. And then the other facet that's more it's about the podium, so I am not a overly active role within the podium, but I am a reviewer to ensure that we have um, no errors, things of that nature, along with the rest of the members of the national leadership team. And I focus on encouraging individuals to submit articles. On the recognition standpoint, there's, of course, our awards and scholarships that are offered by the sorority. So advertising these, um, assisting the Board of Trustees and the Scholarships Committee with being able to select and notify individuals who are who will receive the scholarship, um, as well as encouraging additional scholarships and supporting those functions. We also, as a, the VPCR, you can also apply on behalf of the sorority for other awards from other organizations and have that ideal of achievement as, as in the back of your mind. I tripped over that quite a bit, <laughs> but the ideal of achievement and being able to um, support the sorority in that recognition effort. And then, as I said at the beginning, there's a lot of the all other duties as assigned portions for this role. Um, you are, as I'll talk about on one of the next slides, the helper of the group. Um, so being able to help coordinate different special events and projects, however you may be needed to support other members of the National Council and leadership team. Um, supporting student leaders at both the district and chapter level, so answering questions, you are the front line, I would say, of where the students are you're the first point of contact in many cases from social media so being well informed about the organization about events about programs and about our policies is very important and of course you are an active participant on the national council so being able to drive progress forward throughout your biennium and setting up the future bienniums and then as i said earlier because i jumped the gun you also are a supporter of the national leadership team coordinating emails zooms meetings calendars things like that so there's a whole bunch that fits into the VPCR role. And with all those tasks, there's also um, some skills that I think are really helpful for the role. Um, as everyone has said so far, having clear communication and time management are important. It is a role that also requires attention to detail. So whether it's in crafting your communications or drafting social media or just planning out events and seeing how the pieces fit together. You definitely need to be adaptable. Things change kind of on a dime sometimes and you may get feedback from uh, one branch of the organization or we need to pivot to another area um, in response to things going on within the organization or in the band world. Being open and responsive, and responsive to feedback is very important as you're often setting out a draft and then waiting for additional response and being able to respond to that in an effective manner and really being a supportive leader. So it may not be you at the front of the room, it may be you finding ways to support the rest of the organization from further back and in the behind the scenes realm that you can really assist the organization in pushing forward. Because there are so many different hats, there's also many task oriented skills that are important for this role. Um, not that you have to come into the VPCR position knowing how to do all of them, but that willingness to learn is very important. So as I've said, there's a lot of drafting and writing involved, so excellent written and verbal communication. Having a knowledge, at least, of social media management platforms and applications, so the Facebook, Instagram, 
later is one of our scheduling platforms. Canva is where we, where we design much of the content. Having some graphic design or content creation background and experience or an interest in it is definitely helpful. You have a lot of projects going on in different areas of the organization, so being able to act as the project manager and assisting the different branches in achieving our goals is very important. And then also audio and visual editing. Editing. So as we're preparing for this presentation actually to go onto the YouTube, there will be some editing and preparation to make sure that we have a professional look on our uh, website. And then some other features. So as a VPCR, and, and I would say really for every position within the national leadership team, you're constantly learning. And this is something that Chris mentioned just before about the board of trustees. So as the VPCR, you're often coming in and your first experience on the national council. So you're learning what the internal operations are of the sorority. And this is how the different branches of the NLT work together, as well as how we work with our headquarters staff. You also are becoming familiar with not just your home chapter or your district, perhaps, but the entire nation. So learning common challenges, specific chapter challenges, and how we can offer them support. And you're also learning on a broader sense the hows and the whys of the organization. So how we came to certain decisions, why it's important for us to make a specific decision to support the future of the organization. Um, as I said a few times, you're very regularly the helper of the National Council. So being ready to jump in and help make larger projects and events happen, being that team player is very important. And I'll say one tip for whoever the next BPCR is, is to definitely find a good rhythm with the national president. So getting into a routine of submitting drafts, getting into a review, how you should communicate with one another, um, and kind of schedule your time to make both of your lives easier um, in being able to push forward with our communications and all the other projects that I talked about. So I encourage everyone who's interested in the VPCR position to go for it. Um, you can always reach out and ask me questions as well at allison at tvsigma.org. We'll have more information about contacts at the end, but I wanted to throw my name in there too. And I'm now going to pass it over to Leslie Garten. Hello, friends via the Zoom and via the YouTubes. Uh, thank you for being here at whatever time you're choosing to watch. Uh, my name is Leslie Garden. I am the National Vice President for Special Projects. Uh, this is my fourth year on National Council so far. And before that, I was on um, the Executive Council for the Alumni Association. So if you have any questions, uh, anything specific, especially with those, I'm definitely here to help. Um, one thing that as we are all talking uh, that I think sometimes it's hard to remember, um, we all, one, one thing uh, is we all have very different lives outside of the organization, but uh, we all do a really good job and we require basically uh, someone who can balance. That sounds scary, but it's really not. It's just uh, figuring out just what works for time-wise. Uh, email is very helpful. You can schedule send things so, um, and just kind of set up times for work. This is not uh, a full-time job. It is very much a free side hustle, we like to say, just to better the organization and to better our own skills. Um, and then one other thing I really like is uh, we all have completely different jobs in, in different areas. So it's really cool to connect with each other and just uh, just learn about just different areas. And I always like to brag with my real job and my, and my family. I'm like, oh yeah, I've got friends over here and here and here. It's pretty neat. So I'd like to talk to you tonight about uh, the Vice President for Special Projects. It is uh, a lovely task where um, in this position, you can serve two consecutive terms. Uh, it is not a requirement to have served on national council before serving in this role. So this is a great opportunity if you're looking for um, just kind of figuring out how national council works. Uh, this and the VPCR roles are both excellent opportunities for that. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so my job as VPSP, I, I like to talk about it in three different segments. Uh, biggest thing online, um, what our active chapters see is the Focus on Five campaign. Uh, that is a year-round thing or during the school year, basically. But 
I, I work with chapters and I work with district BPSPs to um, complete and execute uh, wonderful programs that better their band program and their community um, just through some different tasks, some different opportunities. I, I also work with district and national convention on um, women and music speakers. That's kind of my big, big task is communicating, first finding, then communicating, then securing women and music speakers for district convention and national convention. Uh, I've been working uh, over the last, I believe we've kind of secured it last year. Uh, we started doing a summer workshop series where um, we better our students just with some different workshops, some different uh, networking opportunities, everything like that. Uh, I work on um, workshops and music hour during national convention. We are right in the throes of that as we speak. I believe I have multiple emails out about that at the moment, just kind of penciling in some ideas and just kind of helping to uh, create the best national convention possible for our alumni and our students. Um, I work on uh, just figuring out, uh, just based on the president's needs um, and what they want, uh, what we want our musical number to look like at national convention. Uh, in the past, pre-COVID, we've done a leadership band that has normally fallen on the BPSP just to get, just to be the point person to uh, get instruments, get music, get everything set up that way. Um, then I also advise history archives and uh, programs committee at national convention serving as point person um, based on what charges are for the committee just serving as a as the adult who answers the why in case the students and the um, committee advisors have questions of those um, additionally i participate as the rest of us on national council we i uh, all participate in meetings and events. We, we're usually here one, one or two nights a week, which is lovely. We all know each other's backgrounds. It's fantastic. Uh, the History and Archives Committee, as I just talked about, uh, we started uh, well for convention and then um, ad hoc committees during the school year. I uh, help advise History and Archives Committee. And also uh, we started a new committee this year called the Music Education and Musicianship Committee, which is fantastic. And then also whatever else the national president would like me to do, I am there willing and ready to go for it. Uh, next slide. Yep, thank you. Uh, so some of my related skills, as these are all, as Allison said, they're very transferable to everybody on leadership. Uh, clear communication, time management, as we are all busy people, it's sometimes difficult to uh, fit time for everything, but one thing I really appreciate, appreciate about the organization and especially our National Council, we all have such different lives, we have different busy times, and we understand that, so like this time of year, uh, I'm a band director in real life, and so this is my concert season, so um, my council member, my fellow council members know that I cannot take on too much extra this time of the year. And that's okay, because I make up for that in the summer when I have time. Uh, we adapt, I adapt very well, as we all do. I'm open and responsive to feedback. If we always, uh, as we're promoting new um, opportunities and materials, we like to bring forth to uh, the rest of the National Council to kind of poke holes in those ideas. We bring those to our students. And so uh, we can just make the best opportunities we can for our students. Networking's always fantastic. Uh, Long-term planning, we are, as, as we know, district convention does not happen within a month's time. It takes the full year of just getting everything set up. Same with National Convention. It takes the two years of meetings and lots of commenting on Google Docs, everything like that, just figuring out what works. Um, Task-oriented skill, uh, one thing that I really enjoy about this position, I serve as the hype person for uh, the organization. When I'm talking with women and music speakers, I'll, I introduce myself and I uh, talk about the organization, I give our mission statement, I give websites, um, that we have and answer questions that our potential women and music speakers have. And we have a wealth of 
different things for people to see on our social media, on our website, everything like that, on our YouTube uh, channel. We have a whole Women in Music Speakers series channel. So it's been a joy just kind of to be the tour promoter that I never thought I could be being the internal music teacher at home, but getting to do this is kind of living, living the dream job outside of the real life. So it's pretty cool. Uh, other things I do, um, like I've talked about a little bit, focus on five is a big task that takes up, not takes up, but it's, it's a time intensive activity. Um, just working with, uh, I have six uh, district vice presidents for special projects, and we kind of work together with uh, to talk to their chapters and just to provide support and feedback. Um, and so just to help our chapters be as good as they can be. Uh, Focus on Five is a great program that really promotes what our organization is about. It's one of our most visible uh, things that we do. And so it's very important for these to look for the um, focus on five stripes, the submissions and everything to look as great as they can be. Uh, something that's difficult about that is having to tell students no and being able to back up why. And so that's some some of the things that are not all sunshine and puppy dogs, but uh, it makes us better as an organization in the long run. And uh, just being open to communication with uh, chapter members, with directors of bands, everything like that, I think is really helpful. Um, someone, especially with uh, the Women in Music speaker series, uh, just someone who is well-versed in the collegiate band world is helpful or just, uh, and that doesn't necessarily, it really doesn't mean being a uh, professional in music in your day job. It just being able to utilize your contacts. Um, all of us were in band in college. Hopefully we've kept those contacts. Hopefully we've stayed friends with a lot of those people. You might um, have friends that are music majors that are music professors at different schools that they have contacts, things like that. And just kind of utilizing those resources to find the best women in music speakers that we can and uh, workshop presenters, everything like that. Um, I also, as we all do on National Council, um, it really is, we all work together and it is the, um, we work under the national president's uh, vision. So as we, we all do our own things and have our own independent projects, but ultimately this is, this is something we all work together to um, make us strong as possible as a national council and just working under the national president to make sure that we're just fulfilling our role and fulfilling our mission statement, I think is really important. But yeah, I think that's all I have. If I get a subtle nod, perfect. All right, I will pass the Zoom microphone over to Siobhan. Hello everyone, my name is Siobhan Wiltspratcher. I am serving as the Tall Beta Sigma National Vice President for Membership and Expansion. Um, and amongst these other wonderful people here, very excited to tell you a little bit about what I do in the role of Vice President for Membership and Expansion or VPME um, slash President Elect for Tall Beta Sigma. And so looking at what the NVP, uh, VPME does and um, constitutionally, of course, serving in the absence of the national president, presiding over meetings as needed, um, and also in my role designated as the expansion officer of the sorority. Um, so uh, being able to go out and find new chapters, talking with director of bands and you know, even potential students, which I did a little bit of that earlier today, um, with opportunities to expand and start new chapters on their campus. Um, the VPME also, um, with this role, we really focus on these three main things. So membership, curriculum development, and expansion. Um, and so, like I said, with membership, uh, with looking at talking with its potential new chapters actually, but um, also with membership, working with our current members. So reviewing any and actioning any chapter or individual membership issues, um, working with the national president on any 
reporter problems for hazing or other risk management policy violations, um, and also helping our chapters and their sponsors with membership concerns and further developing their members um, and collaborating with our national leadership team on support needed for our chapters. Um, and that support comes from, you know, our chapter visitation assistants may do their visit, bring back some action items that the chapters may need. I work with our national leadership team members on ways that we can make that happen for the chapter. How can we help skill them up as leaders in their role? Or even what does it look like to give them extra support as they are wanting to take on a new membership class for the first time? Um, and so the membership role is a lot of caring for our students um, and helping them through the goods and the bads um, of their experiences here. When it comes to curriculum development, I serve as the ex officio for the curriculum committee. Um, I work with our co-chair people to um, collaborate and coordinate with the members on edits and enhancements for the national curriculum, um, looking and, and trying to find holes in it and ways that we can continue to improve this curriculum the overture for our new members and for our current members um, so that they're able to teach it in a way that makes sense for the new members, but also making it an experience in, its, in itself and how everyone would be able to have that enjoyable experience and really learn something and take it home with them um, from time as time goes on for them. And then also with that, I manage the MEP review process and resource development. And so all chapters of Tall Beta Sigma have to have an approved MEP. So I work with the other members of the national leadership team and the curriculum committee to re collect and review all of the MEPs or the membership education plans that are submitted each semester. Um, and also working with our leaders and the committee to be able to develop additional resources for MEP development on the chapter level as well as other resources to help with membership education overall. Um, and the other part is expansion. As I mentioned before, connecting with universities and college band directors for potential expansion on their campuses. I get to sell Tau Beta Sigma every day. Um, and while Ta uh, Leslie is Tau Beta Sigma's hype person for women in music, I'm kind of the hype person for TBS um, and telling them why TBS will enhance their band programs and help their bands to really grow and their members to, to lead in a way that um, just elevates everything. Um, also, I work with our national leadership team members and advisors and even the students when they're in the petitioning process. I'm um, coordinating rituals and overseeing the whole entire process from um, turning in the application, reviewed from the National Council, all the way through post-installation training, check-ins, and more. And then lastly for expansion, uh, oftentimes I'm there to install new chapters in the and they're on campus. If I'm not there, a number, another member of our last national leadership team member is there. Um, and again, working with post insulation processes. Some of the skills that you would see in the VPME are um, is a literally a continuation of everyone, everything everybody else has said. Um, and as everybody's talking about their skills, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's a another great school for MVPME. So um, definitely clear communication, written and verbal. Um, I'm communicating with having to communicate with students all the way from membership candidates, directors of bands, university professionals, etc. And so being able to have that wide scope, wide scope of communication is really important. Um, being able to manage my time, but then also, um, which on the other side, the task oriented is also project management. Um, I am really big about deliverables and getting the information out to the people. Um, and so making sure that the projects that the curriculum committee is putting forth or even the things that I've tasked myself get done is really par paramount. Um, there's an attention to detail because again, we're creating documents and manuals for our membership needs for their their petitioning process all the way through other membership materials like overture um, we have to be creative and have critical thinking um, oftentimes especially when it comes to with chapter issues and how do we uh, how do we help members to move forward from whatever happened it takes a lot of creativity Yes, we want to take then be critical about what we've done before, what happened, um, but you have to be critical in thinking of what is the best way 
for this chapter or these members to move forward from this event or this thing um, that will be able to heal and grow and learn from it and be able to move forward um, with a better footing. Um, lots of problem solving on top of that with the critical thinking um, and even thinking, uh, I feel like the existential crisis that every VPME has or you know, president-elect has is what's the problem that our chapter's having right now and how can we, as, v, as the president-elect, move that into the future? Or, well, actually, I don't want to bring the problem with me, but change it and make it better for the sorority in the future as well. Um, and then also um, for the VPME requires some executive presence. Uh, you've got a lot of experience with that working with chapters, and um, I've had experience from VPCR, VPSP. Um, but we do represent the sorority alongside the national president at different professional um, conferences like the Midwest Clinic and TNEA, et cetera, um, as well as, again, as I'm communicating with other individuals and different stakeholders outside of the sorority and within the sorority, being able to have that executive presence and really represent the sorority um, is, is one of the main, uh, another great skill for a VPME to have. And then for the task oriented, there's lots of project management, like I said, making sure overture the resources and all the membership things are moving forward. Um, and then also definitely an understanding of the overture curriculum and um, even thinking of adult learning and taking from that creativity as well. And so the VPME role is very interesting and very dynamic um, and pulls you in different ways, but um, definitely an opportunity for a lot of members of Tau Beta Sigma to really shine here. Um, other features to, to note as the BPME, um, we're always collaborating and connecting with others. Um, connecting with director of bands and sponsors, um, connecting with chapters on membership programs and education, connecting with future chapters and leaders to learn more about Tau Beta Sigma, um, collaborating with the KKSI in BPME as well on joint membership concerns and even expansion efforts that we do together. And also doing a lot of collaborating with district and national leaders on support for our chapters. Um, I think connection and communication and collaboration are probably two of my favorite things to do. And so I think being in the VPME role, luckily there's a lot of that that happens um, on top of connecting and collaborating with the members of the national leadership team and the national council. Um, and constitutionally, the National Vice President for Membership Expansion is the only one who's, uh, you only have to have served on the National Council to be eligible to serve in this role um, and is the president-elect for the sorority. And so I do work alongside the National President to learn the ins and outs of the role as well um, to, to later elevate to National President in two short years. Um, and so uh, if you'd like to know more about what it's like to be the National Vice President for Membership Expansion, um, please let me know. Again, some more information coming up here very soon um, and how to connect with us individually on our specific roles. And so thank you for listening to what I have to say about MVP and me. I wanna pass the baton over to Erica, our National President. Hello, everyone. And let me start by saying, as national president, I, I would not be successful in anything or any vision that I set up without um, the individuals that you've just heard from, uh, the National Council. They really do help uh, push forward our initiatives and our ideas. Um, and as national president, um, it is your role to, to continue pushing that as well. So, you know, this slide tells you a lot about, you know, the national presidency um, from the constitutional standpoint. Um, the TLDR here is immediately when you take that oath of office and you are past that gavel, you immediately become the boss. Um, and I didn't, you we joked around about that, you know, when, when I became the national president, um, you know, a lot of people felt inclined to give me gifts and such, and I kept seeing a recurring theme. So I got like a notebook that said boss lady on it, and I got a cup that said the same thing. And it's a joke at the moment, but then you, you legitimately in some ways really do kind of embody that because um, you start to oversee so many things that pertain to the current sorority, as well as building the sorority as well. Um, so 
remembering that each office is held for two two terms. And so specifically, um, the VP Emmy, as Siobhan um, has has expressed, is the role that elevates into um, the the presidency. And so probably midway through through my spill, you're going to be like, well, then why do we need to learn about what the national president does? Because I can't even run for this office. Well, the reason why it's important to know what the, the national president does is because um, we hope that those who are interested in running for one of our VP positions, whether that be VPCR or VPSP, that you have it in your mind to want to maybe be in this role in the future um, because you're training the things that you learn where Allison is and where Leslie is and now where Siobhan is um, really does help develop you for this role. Um, and so it's important to hopefully frame yourself that that is what your end game is going to be as a member of the National Council is that you'll be on the council and potentially want to make it all the way to this particular role. So it's important to know what that role does. Um, so yeah, next slide. So some of the roles and responsibility of the national president. So uh, as I mentioned, you become the boss, you automatically become the face of the national organization. Um, and so what that means is that you are the representative as Siobhan had mentioned at many of our events and conferences. So whether that be Texas Music Educators Association or the Midwest Clinic. And very recently over the last probably I would say five to six years, we've made a point to attend either Honda Battle of the Bands, if it's in Georgia, or the Battle of the Bands that we've done the last two years over um, in Houston to make sure that uh, we know that we love and support our HBCU chapters and bands. Um, and so making sure that we are, are where the band people are. Um, and so when you are there, your face, you, you, rep, you are the representative body of the national organization. You serve jointly as the direct supervisor for the national executive director. And our current national executive director is Mr. Steve Nelson. So he's the person who oversees national headquarters. But myself and my counterpart from Kappa Kappa Psi, Jessica Lee, we oversee him. So while he is their boss, we, are, we automatically become his boss when we become the national uh, president. And so, for example, we give him his, his yearly evaluation or his annual or his um, quarterly evaluations. Um, we represent the National Council on the Board of Trustees. So though I am not a non-voting member of the Board of Trustees currently, my role there is really to understand and help the Board of Trustees kind of connect all of the dots of all of the, the groups um, that have to work together for the betterment of the sorority. Um, so when I'm you know, in my meetings with the National Council, we take that business and make sure that the Board of Trustees understands and knows what's going on. Um, just as uh, Don, Dr. Farmer, sits in our National Council meetings along with Dave because they are in charge of their groups. And so it's important for them to be in our roles and in our meetings to be able to interact with us. Specifically from operations and programs, there are so many. Um, the national president doesn't necessarily start programs, or at least they may plant the seed, but in most cases they are helping the um, other national officers, you know, support the projects that they are leading. Um, so for the entire biennium, we do set the agenda and the vision for the two years. And so when you get that gavel, the very first speech, because you you find that you have to kind of represent like you are the face. And so you have to give a lot of speeches in front of people. The very first one is the vision for the next two years. Um, and so immediately you take the oath, you get the gavel, and then they want to know, now what are we going to do for the next two years? And so you set the agenda um, in that regard of, of what the work is going to be for the sorority um, and hopefully plant seeds for then those who will come after you. We do have national council meetings. We have monthly national council meetings. Um, I say monthly, but somehow we always end up on calls more times uh, throughout the week whenever we need to, to meet. And so as president, you do preside over those. Um, we oversee the progression of all of the work. So not only do we set that vision, but then what is the work that goes into either developing or, or executing that vision over the next two years and, and setting up for success for the future? 
In particular, the chapter visitation assistant program is something that the national president oversees. And that's important because um, the national president currently actually helps um, set up the visits. So meaning like, you know, we assign the visits to whoever's going to um, actually go and execute the visit, whether it be in person or whether it be virtual. And you do a lot of appointments. So anything that is not elected, um, including our national vice president for professional relations, that person is also appointed um, by the national president. So that person is hand selected based on their, um, their background as a member of the music community, most specifically uh, their involvement in university and college bands um, as band directors or educators in that regard. And so that's actually the fir very first appointment that the national president makes. Um, beyond that, if the national president wants to create committees during their biennium, as I did this biennium, you're allowed to do that, um, whether it be something that we want long term or just for this biennium, you call it the, the ad hoc um, committees. They're responsible for appointing the chairpersons and the members of that committee um, and anything else that is is non elected so that includes at our national convention when it's time to um, appoint the committee chairpersons that is also the peer review of the national president. You provide re uh, review and approval for ongoing national programs. I would say the person that I probably provide the most approvals to would be Allison, because um, we have, as she had mentioned, we have a steady amount of things that need to go out, especially anything that's information based to make sure that everyone knows what's going on with the national organization. Um, and so whether that be, you know, an Instagram post, an email that's going to go out to everyone. Um, it's important that the national president is able to see all of those things before they're pushed out, because I would say probably 10 times out of 10, you know, my name is at the bottom of it and as, as the face of the national organization. Um, and as I mentioned, we, we continue to support projects led by other members of the National Council. And chances are why that's important, not only is so that they can be successful, but in in probably eight times out of 10, you probably laid the groundwork when you were in that role previously. And so it helps them to then continue to take the baton and run with it. And you being able to kind of provide, you know, information based on, you know, whatever, uh, wherever we're at in the sorority versus where we might have been when we had to make a decision in that regard. We work collaboratively with both the Board of Trustees and TBSAA chairperson. So myself, Don, and Dave, we meet, we try to meet at least every monthly, just the three of us to talk about what's going on within our groups and be able to make sure that, as, as David said at the beginning of this, that we are working cohesively. Um, and I like to use the word synergetic as well um, to make sure that you know all of our groups and all of the missions that are happening within those three groups are all working together harmoniously. Um, and then finally, which is really kind of my, my two main things, um, is supporting the students. And so supporting the chapter and district levels. In particular district levels, um, the national presidents oversee. Um, currently, we work with the district presidents of each district as they plan their district convention, their district event. So we make sure that we're there. We make sure that we send people if we can, if we can't be there. Um, and then we oversee their schedules to make sure that um, they have the resources that they need and that they are able to offer the constituents within their district the opportunity to learn um, and that they get a great experience at their district convention. And then the big thing, um, and we are, you know, we are deep into it right now, is um, planning for our biennial national convention. And while a lot of that, um, you know, is dependent upon kind of what I want out of that, I rely heavily on the National Council to help guide what our students need and what experience we want to give them at our national convention. And then when it's all said and done, I am responsible for presiding over all of the official meetings that take place at our national convention. 
Um, so yeah, those are just a couple of the things that are the operations and programs. Like I said, as national president, you often don't necessarily start a lot of things because we want to make sure that the programs that we currently have in place are still relevant and are successful. Um, but you know, often it is continuing um, past legacies that are, are being pushed forward. Um, so yeah. Related skills. So again, clear communication and time management, attention to detail and adaptability. This, this means and goes in a lot of different directions. So I, I have found as national president, some of the adaptability sometimes requires, you know, maybe picking up the slack somewhere if, if there needs to be. Um, and that's where it goes back to that being supportive to all of the national leadership team. So whether that's you know, needing to help a counselor who maybe needs to step away or a CBA who needs to step out of a situation or um, being there to kind of brainstorm um, dilemmas with the national council. It's important for you to be able to be kind of flexible in that regard and sometimes, you know, change up the plans and, and pivot as we've, we've used that word so much over the last couple of, of years. Um, being open and responsible, responsive to feedback. Yes, a lot of, again, you know, we talk about the vision of the national president, but it's really important to be able to have a sounding board um, and actually like listen to that sounding board and make decisions that way. And then collaboration, you collaborate a lot, whether it's collaborating with my counterpart over in Kappa Kappa Psi, whether it's working with other members of the national organization um, or the national council, you know, working with all of the other functioning um, legs of the national organization, TBSAA um, and Board of Trustees, you are working across very many aisles um, when it comes to being the national president. And task-oriented, um, personnel management. So again, as I started, you are the boss. So um, the buck really does stop at your door in terms of overseeing the chapter visitation assistance, you are appointing the district counselors, appointing the CVAs, and then making sure that they are on board to their roles um, and, and understand what is needed within their roles as they get started and as they progress. Lots of project management. So oftentimes it's, here's the idea that we have. Okay, let's see if we can make it happen. Um, whether it's putting an idea in front of me. So if Allison, for example, brings me something and says, hey, can you look at this and make sure this looks good before I push it out? You know, she's, you know, created a deliverable and I'm making sure that it, it meets and it fits into what um, our intended purpose and our intended goals are. Um, and going back to, you know, leadership development, yes, you are often working with the, the counselors, for example, and the CVAs. Um, to maybe get them to a place where they might want to be, um, they might want to continue their time as volunteers with the national organization. So maybe they want to step into the national council if they decide that that's something that they want to do um, so that there is continuous evolution of leadership um, development and building from, you know, from the bottom up and coaching. Um, and then finally, long-term planning. And so as a member of the board of trustees, you sit on on that to help with that, but also getting ideas on where we can see and push the national organization. So though the national presidency sometimes feels very limited to just the two years, what happens in your two years needs to be able to plant the seeds for, for many years to come. And then other features in um, national president, you are extremely responsible for modeling joint relations with working with the national president for Kappa Kappa Psi. Um, you are working to improve national headquarters to council uh, work process. So if there's a deliverable that we need or something that the national council needs to, to succeed, making sure that we're working with national headquarters. Um, and if there's something that needs to change so that the evolution of the organization can occur, that we work with national headquarters to be able to do that so that whatever council is in um, is in uh, their positions at that time are able to be successful in whatever work that needs to get done for the betterment of the national organization. 
sharing what we like to call that institutional knowledge. And so knowing and understanding the decisions that we have made that lead to our current practices. And so I very much valued the time that I had to be the VPCR, VPSP, and VPME, which I was the VPCM, but now that's what we call it. Um, and it was important because I have knowledge that, you know, the current council members, if they're not sure, they can come and ask me and I can, I'm sure I have an email about it because I was on council when something happened where we needed to be able to pass that information on. Um, and constitutionally, as we've already um, established, uh, the only person that is eligible on this call to become the national president currently is our president-elect, who is Siobhan. And so um, the VPME, formerly VPCM, is the only person who's eligible to advance into the national presidency. And so with that, I think now is a good time to talk a little bit about submission materials um, and specifically what we're expecting. And I figure there might be some questions here as well. Um, and so if we could, I'll give you kind of the quick TLDR of each of these events um, and then open up the floor for questions about this or anything that you've heard this evening, um, or even something you didn't and you've always wondered about being in the mem a member of the national leadership team. So specifically some things that your letter of intent should entail. Um, if you've ever applied for a job, think about what that looks like and apply it here in the instance of why are you qualified to take on the role that you're running for and what things do you want to bring to that office? Um, you know, it, it is you selling yourself. You are giving us your, what is it, two, three minute elevator pitch on why you want to be uh, a member of the National Council in whatever role or national leadership um, in that role. Your resume should be one of two things, either be one page that has both sorority and professional experience, or, um, or I should say, Sorry, <laughs> let me rephrase that. A uh, limit is a two page document that has all their information or one page for each. So if you have a page specifically about sorority and a page that talks specifically about your professional experiences. Um, again, we want that elevator pitch. We don't need to know your whole life story. We wanna know why is it, like what do you have? What have you done in the sorority and what do you do professionally that could be uh, important to the role that you're running for? And then your letters of a recommendation. So three letters of recommendation. And we do ask that one be someone who is within your profession. And a good question that has come up a couple of times as we have started this process is, does it have to be like a supervisor at your job? And that's the default answer is, you know, if you can get the person who, who sees your work um, every day and has to evaluate it, you on it, then that's a pretty good person to reach out to, especially if um, you know that they'll give you a stellar letter. But we also have had people give professional letters from maybe people that they work on a project with. So they work at the same place, business or, or within the same um, industry in some way and have worked. The ultimate goal is to find someone who knows your work ethic and knows what you can bring to this role and can speak to that exclusively. And then finally, just a photograph that is suitable for publication because we take that and we put it on our website um, specifically for national conventions so that our students can go and see um, all of the national, those who are running for national leadership, national council, so that board of trustees, um, our life members can see all of who's running for the board of trustees and that the members of the TBSAA can see who is running um, for an executive council position. We also, at our district conventions, um, at started this last biennium is when we give our national council announcements at the 2023 district convention, we will also promote each of you who put in an application there. And so we need something that is easily transferable between, you know, something on a screen for a PowerPoint to something that goes on a website. Any questions first about submission materials or what we're expecting in that regard? And if you do have any specific questions and you don't have them tonight, um, you can reach out to these individuals 
independently. Um, so if you're running for the National Council, reach out to me. If you're running for the Board of Trustees, reach out to Dr. Dom Farmer. And if you're running for a position on the TBSAA EC, reach out to David Alexander. And I will open the floor for any questions specifically about that or just in general. You can also put things in the chat. We're okay with that as well. <laughs> All right. Well, I think seeing none, I believe this completes our first National Leadership Development Series session for this season. Please reach out to us if you have any questions about anything you've heard this evening or as you are working on your application. And we hope to see your applications. We can't wait to see them. Um, and thank you for joining us this evening. And as we mentioned at the beginning, we will be editing this down. And we will be uh, putting this up on our YouTube channel. And finally, I do want to take a moment to say a huge thank you to Allison, our VPCR. She did a wonderful job. She actually put together this presentation. Um, this was another one of those moments where I looked and said, hey, we really need a branded presentation that we can use in various places. And Allison went and did the homework and figured it out and then put it together. And so I just want to say thank you to her for um, doing that intentional work that we've talked about all by Indian Long. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I hope you all have a great rest of your evening. Happy holidays. And thank you so much for your support of the national organization in Tau Beta Sigma. Um, people like you who want to do the work, we appreciate that. And we thank you for, for being with us this evening.